and looking at your project here, it seems like you used the Arduino IDE to program the uh, ESP32. Yeah, that's right. And there's a block diagram for those of you watching. Now, Sigma Studio, I don't know anything about that. Uh, what is Sigma Studio, Clemens? Yeah, well, Sigma Studio is the is an, is a, it's a graphical programming tool for the uh, DSP, the ADAU 1701, well, for the whole family of that uh, type of DSPs, actually, because it's uh, one of a family. Um, and it's a, it's a graphical tool. You have blocks, you drop them on a canvas, and then you draw wires, virtual wires, and that is your program. And then you uh, compile it, and it will upload to uh, the compiled program to the DSP and execute it. I can show it to you awesome. if you want. I can. Yeah, yeah if you take take us down the Sigma Studio road, uh, what is it, Clemens, and how is it helpful? Yeah. So what we are looking now is uh, at now is uh, Sigma Studio. Uh, first of all, you must know that there are two versions of Sigma Studio, and this is the old version. You have to have the old version. Because the new version doesn't support the uh, ADAU 7001, and the old version does. And so you must uh, use the old version. The old version goes up to, that's this version. Let me check which version it is. Share. So that's 4.7. That's the last and latest version of uh, Sigma Studio, and it's not Sigma Studio Plus. So that's important. Um, so Sigma Studio is a, like I said, a graphical program, a programming environment. Here we have the schematic. Uh, this block are inputs, inputs of the DSP. As you can see, it has nine, uh, 10 inputs. Uh, but these are actually um, uh, not the audio inputs. The audio inputs are here. These are the, this one, for instance, these are the DSP outputs. Here we have a can't see it's bigger. And um, a mixer uh, block, and here we have a equalizer block. So this is a graphical, uh, graphic equalizer for band. This where you type in manually the frequency. You have the settings. It's all very graphical. You connect these with virtual wires. Um, so that's how it works. It's and these these sliders we have seen, is it connected then later to the potential meters? You can, you can do see. that, but uh, okay. Uh, in this example, they are not. I don't think so. I don't. Uh, oh, that, sure. that example, you would compile and then it would just upload yeah, this, this the characters characteristic how you configured it here so well, the sliders the, the, will be new settings for uh, one slider you can set the equalizer parameters but then you compile it and these values are fixed then in the dsp yeah yeah it likes uh, as it is uh, this way they are fixed mm -hmm. let me check uh, Uh, we can see here this block, the GPIO block. I'm not sure if you can see it well, but my mouse is circling around the GPIO block. Mm -hmm. uh, here you can, so the 10 inputs, 10 uh, GPIO inputs of the DSP, you can select what you want it to be. It can also be an output, well, it's, why it's called the GPIO. Huh? Um, but they are not set, they're all set to GPIO and not to a potentiometer. This one, the two, I think. Or is it, uh, which one are it again? Certain of these uh, inputs can be a potentiometer analog input, but they are not, not uh, used now. So in this example, we don't use the potentiometers. This is just, this is actually a tutorial that's uh, in the second article explaining how you use uh, Sigma Studio. I see what what um, audio effects are there available in Sigma Studio? Are there also reverbs and, and delays and something? 
Well, that's uh, reverbs and delays is uh, that require a lot of memory, mm -hmm. and this DSP doesn't have a lot of memory, so you cannot have a lot of delay. But here on the left, in the uh, the tree uh, toolbox, so you have here the chip, and then you have the algorithms that you can use on the chip. So we have, mm -hmm. for instance, dynamic bass, we have pitch uh, modification. Mm -hmm. Advanced DSP stuff, transforms. So the idea is that you use these blocks to create your own audio effect. Okay. And if I if I have four audio outputs, I could, for example, uh, create um, two um, separators for the high frequency and low frequency yep. for the yep. stereo. Okay. Exactly. Yes, this uh, this chip, this DSP is used a lot to, to make uh, audio uh, loudspeaker separation filters uh, with, okay. and it's also used a lot in stomp boxes for guitars and uh, other musical instruments. Uh, if you search the internet a bit, you can find all sorts of uh, examples. Uh, but uh, like it's because it's a DSP. The, yeah. Did you test the audio quality in some way? Yeah, well, I have not. Uh, I don't have a super high quality audio testing equipment. So um, for me, to me, it sounds fine. That's all I can say. It's not really uh, precise, and it will not satisfy everybody. But uh, to me, it sounds good. Okay, so we're this is, by the way, if off. you think it doesn't sound well well enough, then the board has uh, two types of filter options. DSP board, the output filters. You can use the. It comes default by with uh, active filters, but you can remove these and uh, install instead passive filters, or in, uh, add your own filters if you want to. 